drastic change in the weather. much for the Black Friday deals. Did you? I ain't done much. I just got something that uh, actually was my fault. Um, I went to my cousin's uh, pre-wedding shoot and I lost the clip that goes underneath the, um, the camera so I can strap the camera to, um, to the strap and I lost that clip. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, might be one in here. big box I don't like really spoiling the uh, the packaging the, these stuff come in such good packaging I don't really want to <laughs> rip open rip open everything but then I can't really use it without without taking out look how neatly that is packed so without ripping anything how do I get this belt out uh, I just want to just want to keep it in this condition probably the clip. Nah, the clip is inside. Ah, okay. Um, hey. Treated myself. Okay, so basically it should be in here. Here we are. Um, yeah, here we go. Ah. This, this goes at the bottom of uh, the camera. Uh, so you can basically strap this. And then this would go, obviously, ooh, somewhere like this, you know? Do you get it? Yeah? So, at the pre-wedding shoot, I lost this, right? Which means that... Oh, let me... Okay. Now, I've completely ruined this packaging. I'm not putting it back together. Okay, finally. Right, don't need this. It's not gonna go back in there. It's rubbish. Okay. Oh my god, must have lose this. Some good stuff. Okay, you get one? Alright, so overall, this is the clip that I lost at my uh, cousin's pre wedding shoot. Um, I don't, I'm not really a fan of putting the other side on here. So as you can see, this is stripped on uh, the left of the camera, my left. And then you can obviously put one of these on the right, but I'm not a fan of putting both of them here. And then you've got this, you know, sort of dangly sort of thing here. I prefer the sort of the sling. So which means that this would somehow go like that. And then you bring the camera around and you hold it like that bit uncomfortable at the moment with all these layers but you get the point right let's get on with that what's up peeps welcome back to another video my name is Manny and today we're going to be talking like I said earlier three points in how to stabilize your footage simple ones not expensive couple of gears uh, I bought in the Black Friday sale in uh, you know November um, I'm just going to show you the three tips that I think are pretty much simple, inexpensive, and will help you stabilize the footage. Also, will give your hand a bit of a rest as well. We'll go along the way and then you'll figure out what I mean. So, number one. So, we go around shooting, not many people take pictures or video with one hand, unless you're doing something with the other, like, you know, holding a, holding a light source or an object in front to get that sort of blur or you know the glare or whatever you want to call it um but i would really recommend that your first point of stabilization is your second hand always shoot with one hand on the grip obviously and the second hand for stabilization this will give you really good stabilization and it will really help when you you know when you're editing and stuff like that the video and you think oh man that looks really jittery now i'm gonna have to put on um the wrap stabilization on premiere pro or whatever you use um but if you're already using your second hand to stabilize your footage believe me that will really help going forward it's, it's as simple as that got back to that because i had to take the camera off 
the, uh, the item that I'm going to show you next. So the second one is a gorilla pod. I tend to use this as my second point of stabilization. So I would usually have obviously my hand on the camera and the second one on the gorilla pod. And this actually helps take the little bit of weight off, you know, all the time holding onto this or holding onto this. Especially if you got, I'm using a 24 to 70, but there's larger lens like the 70 to 200. Um, my 85 mil, which is which is humongous. Like that is a very heavy lens, the 85 mil. Um, so the hand does get tired sometimes. And if you're on a long shoot or you're shooting in the city or you're doing night photography, day photography, whatever, and you're out there for hours, you can get tired, you know, just holding the camera in your hand all the time. What you tend to do, I tend to do, I tend to do is uh, mount this on my Joby tripod. And what that does is that, you know, if I want to let go of my right hand and have that one free, that also helps as well. So then you've got my left hand onto the tripod, which is stabilizing the camera. If I'm shooting, just hold on to that. Oops, just hold on to that. And then I've got that another second point of stabilization where I can just, you know, be a bit more comfortable with, you know, just shooting, um, you know, quite stabilized. And also the good thing about this is that you can just, Did you see that? You can just mount it. Well, almost. You can just mount it, you see. You can just place it there and your whole position and then you can just move it around by turning this knob and just loosening it. And you've got, you've got your camera. There you are. There we are. So you can just move the camera around but you know that the position of it is stabilised. It's sitting there. It's not going to move unless you let go of this, you know which you don't want to do, obviously. So let's just tighten this up before I become even more clumsy and do something ridiculous and spoil the rest of my day and this video. So let's just tighten this up. There we are. So if you're shooting at night and you want that long exposure or something like that, place this on a platform and you're good to go. And that's point number two, simple as that. These are, I bought this for what? I think 60 or 70 quid on Amazon and it's been going strong all these years. I've had it for about four years now. No need to change or anything like that. So second point, get, it's just, it's just, it's just not happening today, is it? Second point is that get a Gorilla tripod, the Joby tripod, do the job for you. That is second point on stabilizing your footage. Oof. Okay, point number three. Oh, this is the last one because I just had to take, why am I looking at my hand? Um, okay, point number three, like I explained earlier in the video, the strap. The idea of this is that it has a little bit of tension around your, around your, underneath your arm, around the back of your neck a little bit, just below. And, and you can hold the, the, the camera out and you can get that stabilization as well. So the strap, is point number three to very good stabilization. I'd really, really recommend that you put money into a strap. If you're not gonna use it every single day, but have it there in your camera bag so that going forward, when you need it, you can use it. This one I just bought is from Peak Design, not sponsored by them, but I did, like I explained in the video, I do have another one. It's a, it's a slim fit one in black, but I lost the mountain key. Uh, which means that I then need to, if I want to use this, I need to mount it onto the side here, which I'm not a great fan of. I just prefer one of it on the side and the other one down below because I prefer the sling rather than the lift, if you know what I mean. But point number three, strap. Must have in the camera bag. No need to use it every single day, but I would really recommend that you have it there so that when you need it, it's there and it really helps with stabilizing the footage. And that's the three points. I think we've done good. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video.